they all say Tom. Uh, it's okay. really a complicated question because in French I've always been Tom Amitia. Yeah. All my uh, friends I've worked with for the past many years have always say Tom. But in the family, uh, on Monday night I was having supper up north with some old friends and family and I've always been Tommy. But of course in the NDP if I decided to use Tommy, <laughs> people would say I was trying to steal Tommy Douglas's name. So yeah, right. we're going with Tom most of the time. But I still say, you know, if I'm doing a recording in French, I'll say Ici Tom Amitia. Yeah, I was just finding out that uh, Tom... Mulcair gets up at four o'clock every morning. Yep. And I, it goes back to my old uh, habit of getting up very early to do my gazette route when I was a kid. You had a gazette route too? Uh, for years and years in Shamadi. Yeah, we're really? out. Yeah. Oh, but you had a terrible gazette route. I had a big gazette route. Yeah, I had big. 65 during the week and 105 on the week. But houses? All houses. I had the bottom of Dorval Avenue at the lake. Five apartment buildings ah, with elevators, easy, all of them. Easy. And, yeah. Now I used to take out my Labrador, go out every morning, and I, I still had a gazette route into Sinja because I'm from a family of 10 kids. We had to work really hard, so we had a gazette route into half pocket money. Yeah. That's just amazing. And now you're you're um, you're that close to being the prime minister of the country. I mean, you know, this is the closest I think that an NDP leader has ever come in terms of in terms of the hopes going in. It is a long election campaign. So how do you keep the momentum going? with a smile and a great team around us. And Catherine's with me a great deal. She's got her own busy career. Catherine is a psychologist who works in long-term care and palliative care in the public sector and in private practice. So she's taken a couple of months off uh, as a leave of absence and she's gonna be with me. And we just, we're having fun. We've got a spring in our step. Uh, people know that we can do it. After they saw what happened in Alberta when we formed a strong majority NDP government there, they started looking at us differently, and it's been a, a very good few months for us, but we do know that we can't take anything for granted. We have several more months of hard work, and we're facing a pretty ferocious adversary in, in Stephen Harper. Okay, NDP leader uh, Thomas Mulcair, I think you're going to need a psychologist over the next <laughs> 11 weeks. She's <laughs> always there. No, I carry her well, around with me. No, I, can, I can see that because, okay, you just mentioned Stephen Harper. Listen to this, and this is not attacking you necessarily. Sure. This is indicative of, of the kind of sniping that's going sure. on Trudeau. Harper, Mulcair, in this sort of circle. Here we go. Actually are. Now, friends, that is about the best description of NDP economic policy I have ever heard. You know, it's like uh, it's like Mean Girls in high school. You guys sometimes <laughs> you ridicule each other. You you twist uh, the words sure. a little bit. So, what, like, how does how do you react to something like that? With a smile, uh, because it is Stephen Harper, and it's it's the only note that he knows. It's the only song that he can sing. And I think Andrew, above and beyond all other considerations, it's the number one reason why Canadians are just so tired. But you do that sometimes too. Oh, I've been a top slugger against him in yeah. the House of Commons. Don't forget, he completely steamrolled his two previous opposition leaders who had been Stefan Dion and Michael Ignatiev. He wasn't able to do that with us. I can promise you he did not enjoy showing up to question period when it was me asking him the questions. I guess it's because I come out of a bare knuckles neighborhood called the Quebec National Assembly and I you know, stood up strong against the, the separatists up there and I was in the front rows for some pretty tough rows. So I didn't, uh, you know, no, no quarter asked, none given. It was, these were really tough fights with Stephen Harper. And we've been going at it, uh, hammer and tongs, with a completely different vision, a positive vision of what we can accomplish in Canada. Mr. Harper is all about cutting back, telling Canadians that the types of services we've had for years, like door-to-door -door mail delivery, somehow we can't afford that anymore. But that's just not true. The NDP will bring back the mail delivery to people's homes. It, is it true what he says about the NDP wanting to uh, raise taxes? We will raise taxes on Canada's largest corporations because they're the only Canadians not paying their fair share right now. It'll be a small incremental increase, but it'll be very, very, very soft uh, compared to anything that Mr. Harper is uh, claiming we're planning to do. We're also going to make sure we lower the taxes for small and medium sized businesses because they create 80% of new jobs in Canada. So it's a balanced approach. NDP leader uh, Thomas Mulcair, uh, can you answer this question? Why right now does it seem like it's always uh, Harper? sniping at Trudeau and Trudeau sniping at Harper when you know you're doing very well in the polls why do they ignore you sometimes well I I think that they is that good see, for you or is that bad for you I, I think that overall that conservatives started putting together some attack ads on us I mean you're I'm a bit more of a known quantity I've got 30 years of public administration experience I've been a minister I've you know done that work of making tough decisions around the cabinet table so everything that I've done is there to see. I'm a pretty prudent public administrator, so it's a bit hard for them to use some of the old caricatures against the NDP with me. One of their first attacks against me, Andrew, was to say that I had lowered my budgets when I was the Minister of the Environment 
yeah, we managed it well, we put together a new system and we saved money. So that wasn't much of an attack. And so they love to try to play to the caricature of the NDP, but we're, we're prudent public administrators, people know that about us. How have you been able to, uh, you know, you had uh, basically um, a few people elected in the last election who were totally surprised to be elected. You were surprised Absolutely that they true. were elected, yes. they were surprised that true. they were elected, They were some of them were just out of high school. <laughs> yes. Um, and um, how did you manage not to have any bozo eruptions over the last, as far as I can tell, there were no bozo eruptions over the last few years. Well, they all had one thing in common. They really wanted us to succeed, and they were smart. And I can remember at the time of Les Carrés Rouges, you know, the wet red square, when there was all those protests, some of the younger ones, you know, wanted to be there because they would have been with them a couple of years earlier. I said, no, now your obligation is to take that up to another level. You have to know that, first of all, education is first and foremost provincial. But above and beyond that, you're a member of parliament. You can't, you know, you're not. A so you did have members. regular conversations with them, slash lectures, slash instruction. Yeah, but seminars. we also had experienced people. Yeah. So we told them, look, you've got three places where you have to work. You have to work first and foremost in your riding. You have to work in parliament, and you have to work within the party. That's a lot of work. It takes it takes up most of your time. We help them build their membership base, build up their volunteer base, do their fundraising because you have to be ready for a campaign. You have to have money in the bank, and so when you are young and you never really had your own budgeting to worry about, all of a sudden you have to worry about getting tens of thousands of dollars collected so you can put up signs during the campaign. And they did it. And, you know, I go back, Ruth Ellen Bresso, who was a young lady who won in Betsy Maskinoje. She was sort of the poster child for the attacks against the NDP after the campaign. Well, go visit her writing. Andrew, I'll make you a prediction that on election night, on October 19th, one of the first names up on the board as having been re-elected will be Ruth Ellen Bresso and Betsy Maskinoje. Really? What did she manage to do over the last four years? She's worked with Every municipality, every school board, every community group, the, the agricultural community loves her because she's been working across Canada on issues like supply management, mm -hmm. which is a big concern right now as we negotiate the Trans-Pacific Partnership. So people in the riding love her. They defend her tooth and nail. So the early attacks by our adversaries have softened. And one of my favorite questions back, because the bloc loves to say, oh, these are nobodies, I always ask people, what about... Can you name me the Bloc Québécois person who was there for 19 years prior to that? And I always get a blank stare, so that's that's my favorite question. Back. NDP leader Thomas Mulcair, more in just a moment. First, we have to check traffic. Uh, CJ, 